Hi, this is Roberta, Prisoners of Hope. Um, I just wanted to share a word um, from Luke 1, um, and I felt to, to hop on here today because it's pertaining to what's happening right now. And as I was getting dressed, I, I just felt the Lord speaking this to me. And um, so I want to share it to encourage people um, and remind people of what the Bible says about situations like this, like situations that we're in in our country. Um, so Lord, I just ask that you take over um, this video and that you would speak through me what you're saying in your word right now um, and encourage your people, Father. Keep us in the faith, uh, I pray in Jesus' name. Okay, so um, in Luke chapter 1, okay, we're going to read, and that is the account of, of the angel uh, coming to Zechariah, the angel coming to Mary, okay? And God was making a distinction. Um, so in Luke 1 verse 5, it says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So Elizabeth was in a very prominent bloodline, the bloodline of Aaron, Moses and Aaron. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So these were serious believers who really walked with God and obeyed God. Um, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in the years. And, you know, this shows it doesn't matter what what lineage you're in, what bloodline you're in. Um, you know, difficulties come to us all on this earthly plane. OK, they were barren, well advanced in years. They never had children. So it was that while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went to the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And right now, the enemy is trying to put fear on people. Fear with the pandemic. Fear with the election. Okay? Now, this was an angel coming that caused him to fear and tremble. Okay, but, that, but I'm just mentioning that, what's going on right now with us. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid. And that's what God is saying right now to all his people. Don't be afraid. Um, and, and the angel was speaking to Zechariah, for your prayer is heard. And God is saying right now, your prayers are being heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will call his name John. The angel is saying what's going to happen. And we have prophets who have said what's going to happen. And verse 14, and you will have joy and gladness. Many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And here we, we show the importance of the womb and the, and the child in the womb where we have this battle going on, where one side wants to destroy full term babies. Life in the womb is valued by God. These these things are, are written here for more than just telling the, the story of John the Baptist's conception and Jesus's conception. Verse 16, and he'll turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Okay, and here we are in this hour. We ask for the spirit of Elijah to be on the remnant of God, the people of God, to call out. Uh, the Baal system, the Baal prophets, the prophets of Baal, okay? Some of that is the false media. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, okay? And part of that, um, before, uh, I think a day or two before election day, the Lord gave me a word, Trump Nation, that the Trump, na Trump family being a picture of what he wants to do for the family in America, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, he's raised, raised successful children in their tight-knit family. 
and you really don't see them uh, boozing it up out there. You don't see them drunk and on, on drugs. Okay. God, it's, it's like a picture that he wants to do for America to restore the family unit, which has been ripped apart by many different means. And it goes on to say, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He is preparing with all this shaking to, what, for his return, giving everyone a chance to get right with him. He's exposing things so you could say, wow, I'm getting out of that. I'm not having anything to do with that, right? Verse 18, and Zechariah said to the angel, and this was his downfall. How shall I know this for I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced in years? He doubted. And right now the enemy is trying to get everyone doubt. Oh, Trump's really not going to get back in. Oh, there's there is going to be a Chinese takeover in America. The enemy is trying to fear monger right now with the spread, with the COVID. All of a sudden, all the... Uh, Governors, mostly Democrats, I might add, even though there's corruption in both sides here in America, those parties are going to be overturned completely, I believe, and not exist. But, um, you know, how shall I know this? He questioned, okay? God is going to move in this situation. And how do I know? Because the prophets have spoken. The prophets have spoken. Second Chronicles 20 says, believe God, believe the prophets and you will be established. That's how we know. Okay. Verse 19. And I know because he spoke it to my heart and I'm prophetic in nature. And he has spoken things to me just, just this past week. I put, he's going to flip the script. That's what I heard from God a couple days before election. I heard Trump nation. And I put a little video out on that and about restoring the family, rebuilding, repairing, restoring couple days before the election, what God wanted to do in America and using Trump, whether you like it or not. Verse 19, and the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. And honestly, there's been glad tidings. I mean, Mark Taylor prophesied that, that Roe versus Wade will be overturned that we will not be dependent on other oil producers in America, okay? Um, that there'd be five Supreme Court justices appointed by Donald Trump and that he would serve a second term. And I believe the prophets. I believe, I believe these glad tidings. And Amanda Grace has prophesied wonderful things too about every evil plan, no matter what they're doing, that it will backfire. Verse 20, but behold, this is what the angel said to Zacharias because he doubted in question. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And I think it was last week, I wrote a little piece on Facebook and posted it about time. Time is in God's hands. God's got this. And he even said, I have a dead line that some people might not be making it because they refuse to repent and turn. But it's in God's time. You've got to trust in the timing of God. Verse 21, And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was as soon as the days of the service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now, after these day, those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself five months saying, thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach um, among the people. And that is, God is going to take away the reproach of his remnant. Take a re, uh, 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 take away the reproach of his prophets that have been called false prophets, taking away the reproach of Donald Trump, where they have lied and twisted the truth and said stuff like he's like Hitler, when they're really the communist, socialistic, in bed with China people. Okay, God is going to take away the reproach in the name of Jesus. Okay, and if we go down, um, now, now the birth of Mary, I mean, not the birth of Mary, the announcement of birth of Jesus to Mary. Verse 26, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come 
And the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled and his sayings of his sayings and considered what manner, manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You know, I, I could say, Don't be afraid, America. You have found favor with God. You have found favor. Remnant of God, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. God has heard your prayers. Verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There will be no end. There's no end to his kingdom. His kingdom is coming. His will will be done in America, in our individual lives on earth as it is in heaven. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One who is to be born of you will be called the Son of God. So we declare and decree the word of God that the power of the highest is going to overshadow America, that the, that the uh, power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow the power of the highest will overshadow our government, overshadow the election fraud, overshadow our individual lives. Alleluia. And that we as a nation will give birth to the things that God wants us to give birth to in the name of Jesus. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Verse 37, for with God, nothing will be called impossible. Now, right now in the natural, it looks impossible. That's when God moves. You know why? Because he'll get all the glory and honor and praise for it. Not us. There we go. Verse 38, then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed um, from her. And that needs to be our posture, Lord. You know, and that's believing the prophets. That's believing God. That, that will be established. Let it be done to us according to your word, Lord. Let it be done to us according to what your prophets have spoken, Lord. We're your true prophets, not your false prophets. Um, and the angel of the Lord departed from her. One last part. Now Mary arose in those days, went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. There's that leaping in the womb again. Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember, it's going to be not by might, not by power, but by his spirit in this hour. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And I'm just going to take that one step further because, this, you know, I'm, I'm just saying this is symbolizing something. Blessed is the fruit of the womb of the righteous in America that will give birth to God's will and purposes in America. But why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Okay, and I think some of you, despite what's happening in this world, can attest to the fact that there's an excitement in you and a joy in you, which is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit's excited about what's to, what, what, he, what the Father God, Lord Jesus and him are about to do on planet Earth. Verse 45, blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told from her, from the Lord. Now, it's interesting that, you know, we're in this month, you know, where the enemy twists believe in with this, all this Santa Claus, you know, garbage, lies, deceit. Okay, sorry if you're into that, but I'm not because it covers the glory of God, the glorious thing. We know Jesus wasn't born on the 25th. We know that, but... It was, you know, symbolizing when Jesus was born, Hanukkah, the whole thing, a miraculous Hanukkah where those candles kept burning for the eight days, miracles, um, a miracle birth where a virgin gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ, a miracle where God sent his only son as a baby and humbled himself. Wow, wow, you know, wow, wow, wow. So if these people can believe those things, how much more can we believe right now? that God's going to have his way in the USA and that evil and wicked doers are going to be taken care of in the, the, the Lord God Almighty, where he has spoken all, all year through various voices that he is bringing his justice. Okay. 
So if you're in the believing group like I am, it says we're blessed. And there will be a fulfillment of those things spoken um, that were told us from the Lord. His sheep know his voice. We know what we've heard. Okay? Um, all of his people are prophetic. So we've all gotten, like I put a post about flipping the script, that we all get bits and pieces. We all see through the glass darkly but as everyone gives their part and piece of what they're seeing whether it's a prophetic dream a prophetic utterance or in the office of a prophet which you know like mark taylor i believe is an office of a prophet uh, different people out there um you know and and amanda grace office of a prophet and there's many more people i don't want to leave out anyone um i i you know so we're all anointed and we all have gifts and they all are needed. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to close in prayer. So Father, I pray, encourage the people. Um, let us not doubt or question. Let us stay in faith, believing that there will be a fill, fulfillment of those things spoken over America, over the presidency of Donald Trump. Uh, we are not those who waver. We are those who have faith and believe and stand on your word and what you have said. Um, we believe you, Lord. We believe the prophets. And we are standing that we will be established and that we will see your glory. We thank you that in uh, Second Chronicles 2020, they turned on themselves. We thank you, Lord, that you are going to have your way in the USA and bless your people to stay in faith no matter what we see with our natural eyes. Um, you know, we don't want to be like Zechariah. Um, we want to be like Mary. Let it be done to us according to your word. And I bless your people to have faith and... Um, that we will be rejoicing. Yes, there is going to be shaking, but we will be rejoicing in the victory that you are going to bring. So a harvest of souls comes in before your return in Jesus mighty name. Okay. God bless you and have a blessed day in every way. And I hope this encouraged your faith to, to, to stay in faith. God is coming through. It will be miraculous in Jesus mighty name. God bless you guys. Bye.